Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Becky Cole. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to me. I'm a new face to the Lemon Lane uh, and Highlights Crafts crew. Uh, you may recognize me from um, Create and Craft. I've been with them for four years. Uh, and I also launched the gorgeous Nature's Veil vale range uh, for Lemon Lane there last week, which you can see behind me, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but if you've never seen me before, uh, my name is Becky, as I said, and uh, I've been sewing my whole life. So uh, I know, I, I think I know what I'm doing. Let's cross our fingers and hope it all goes swimmingly. Um, but yeah, my uh, training, so you've got a little bit of background on me. Uh, I'm trained in period pattern cutting for TV and theatre. So all those beautiful corsets and crinolines and gorgeous things that you see on the telly. Um, that's the stuff I am trained to make. Uh, but I'm not making anything like that today. Uh, today I am going to be making a padded sewing machine cover. And we're going to be using the gorgeous Arabella fabric, uh, which you can see in front of me. Uh, this is, um, as you can see, it's cut by the meter, so it's $17.99 per meter. Uh, if you're Robin's Nest member, it's $16.19. So get a little bit of a discount there, which is always lovely. Uh, so the Arabella fabric you can see in front of me, it's quite mosaic-y uh, in pattern. I just adore this. I can think of a million uses for it. Uh, the colours are beautiful. It's sort of a, a very pale, almost a pale Wedgwood blue. And um, we've got an ivory in the background and then sort of a, a sort of dusty cream running through it. The colours are gorgeous. And we've got two accompanying colours to share with you as well. So we've got the, uh, this is the Dusty Dunes and we've got as well the Tinted Blue. So these are, uh, we've brought these along with the Arabella fabric because they tie in so gorgeously. So I'm going to be using these three fabrics today. Uh, they're all cut by the meter. They're all printed onto, here at the studios, they're all printed onto this fabulous heavyweight cotton so it's 100 cotton it's 150 wide so when you're getting that that meter it's 150 by a meter uh, and obviously you can buy them in continuous lengths um, by the meter so that's fantastic for all your needs this is a very heavyweight fabric it's brilliant for your upholstery brilliant for um you know you could make curtains from it you could do your cushions you could do all sorts of things you it's the sort of weight of a lightweight denim i would i would liken it to light to midweight denim so actually anything that you'd make out of denim you could use this for as well so maybe jackets uh, trousers uh, any kind, kind of clothing that needs a bit more structure um but as i said today we're going to be using this to make a uh we're going to be making this uh sewing machine cover. So there we go. So lost my brain and my words then. Uh, so I'm going to move these all out of the way uh, so we can get cracking. Uh, so this is the tinted blue that I've just mentioned. So this is very, very pale. Uh, it's really beautiful. It's so subtle uh, and it's got that beautiful washed uh, sort of watercolored effect. It's a texture behind it. So it's not a flat blue. Uh, that's Gorgeous, and that's seventeen ninety nine a metre, or sixteen ninety nine if you have uh, if you are a Robin's Nest member. Uh, and this is the dusty dunes that we also uh, I mentioned as well. This is also the same. It's got that gorgeous sort of almost watercolour washed through texture in the background. Uh, and this is a beautiful sort of sandy camely uh, beige colour. Uh, and again, exactly the same. Uh, cut by the meter, seventeen ninety nine or sixteen ninety nine if you are a Robin's Nest member. Uh, and we've also got our labels. I love these because to be able to add a label to something that you've made just makes all the difference. It really, really gives it a professional finish and also you know to be able to provide washing uh, washing instructions is really great as well otherwise if you're going to give something to somebody or sell something to somebody um, it's a bit of a guesswork on how to wash it if you don't give them that information so I love these uh, and this is our bag boutique pat uh, pattern pack so there's five bags in here they are amazing they're gorgeous uh, this is 18.99 uh, as an introductory price or 17 pound nine pence if you are a robin's nest member so there we go got all that stuff out of the way so now we can actually start sewing now i am going to show you how to make this now everybody's sewing machine is different uh, which means i can't sort of give you set measurements 
I'm making for my machine here, which is the Brother NV2650D. So if you own this machine and you want my measurements, I'm happy to send them to you. Just message us on Facebook, I can send them to you. Um, but alternatively, I'll show you how I've worked this out uh, and then you can relate the same thing to your sewing machine. Now this is also something that you could make for a bread maker or a mixer in the kitchen. Uh, any large machines that you just kind of want to give that little bit of protection to. Okay, now also, I mean, I do have a cover that, that came with this machine, but it is an embroidery machine as well. So the cover is sort of built to go over the embroidery machine. So if I want to take my sewing machine anywhere, I just want something that fits my sewing machine. So uh, if you're in the same position at home, you can actually use your current, uh, your current cover as a pattern. That's another way of doing it. Um, but I've actually gone through and measured mine because I wanted it to fit in a certain way. So if you can uh, have a look at what I've got in front of me. So this, I'll hold it up so you can see it a bit clearer. So this is the uh, pattern template that I've made. So I've measured, this is the top here, this is the top of my machine. Uh, this is the front side. Uh, you can see that some of the edges are angled. What I've done is I've measured the dimensions of my sewing machine and I have made myself a template. So this is my template. I've drawn it out. You can see how many different scribbles and things. I've, this is just a bit of old sheeting. Uh, something that doesn't matter when I'm going to throw it away uh, and I've just scribbled all over it and moved things around I've then made it up put it over my sewing machine adjusted it etc so it's worthwhile doing this this bit takes a bit of time but it's worthwhile doing it because then you get all of your measurements and they're all uh, they're all you can follow them uh, and create your your sewing machine uh, cover so it is worth doing this Right, so I'm going to move that out of the way. Once you've got your template and you're happy with it, you can use this as your pattern piece to cut out your pieces for your sewing machine. Uh, so that's that. this is basically your pattern piece. Now, if you'd prefer to turn it into paper, by all means. But I actually quite like fabric pattern pieces because I can scrunch them up, move them around, or I can do whatever I want to them. Now, this part here is where the handle's going to go. I'm going to talk about this bit in a moment, but we're going to start off because I want this to be a padded uh, sewing machine cover so I want to be able to I want to quilt it first okay so this is the, the um, top and now what I've done because it's an asymmetrical shape I've put a little F just here in uh, erasable fabric marker so that I know that this is the front part of my machine cover so whenever I'm working I'm going to have that in front of me so that I know that this part as I'm looking at my sewing machine this is the part I'm going to be seeing so I know that which which all the edges line up because it's not always obvious when you've got it laid out which sides are the diagonal sides and so on so there's my cover now to quilt it I'm going to bring this in I have got here some more of that scrap cotton so this is literally just of some old sheeting this is not anything fancy at all um, find my front side because I want to ah, I put a pin in it on this fabric so I can remove my pin because I don't want that in there there we go so here I've got a piece of sheeting and then I've got just some lightweight wadding. Now a little tip as well, I didn't quite, my piece of wadding wasn't quite big enough. So I don't know if you can see down here, if you ever have a piece of wadding that's not quite big enough, you can actually join some pieces on. So these are edge, edges butted up next to each other and a loose zigzag stitch so that it's completely flat. Uh, so there we go, little tip for you there. Right, so I'm gonna line my, my um, top piece over the top. Now, as you can see, I've actually cut the wadding and the cotton bigger than my top piece. This is because when you're quilting something, it's good to have your underneath fabrics larger than your top. Because what can happen as you're quilting, if anything stretches or moves out of the way, you're covered. You've got your wadding and your backing fabric there. Now, I've got a handful of safety pins. I'm going to try and keep this as interesting as possible because, um, you know, when you're having to quilt a lot, um, you're going to just watch me doing quite a lot of the same thing over and over. Um, but basically, what I'm doing here is I'm pinning through, I'm keeping everything flat, and I'm pinning through with safety pins. Oop, come on. The safety pin does not want to play. I'm pinning through all of the layers. 
with my safety pins. So, and I'm pushing it flat. So we'll do the sides in a second. Come down the middle here. Starting at the center, working our way so that the whole area, now I'm gonna be quilting around the circles. So I don't want uh, to put my pins where the circles are because I'm going to end up hitting my sewing machine needle uh, with, she says, putting a pin in completely the wrong place. This way I know that my pins are gonna be out of the way. So just keeping, putting them in all over, because this is gonna help prevent your quilting layers slipping around. So it, it's one of those fiddly jobs that is worth taking the time doing because what you don't wanna happen is to get bul bulbous bits and wonky bits and everything else in your quilt. So there's that bit. I'm gonna do this side here. Quilting's quite an involved thing. And you don't have to quilt this. You could just use the fabrics and not put the layer of wadding in the middle. But I really want to protect my machine because I want to be, I mean, I've brought it here today. Um, I, I carry it around with me when I'm doing workshops and things. I want to protect it. Uh, so just taking the time to do that little bit of wadding, that little bit of quilting, just gives it a little extra layer of protection. Nearly there. Making sure everything is flat and pushing the fabric across so that you're not. Uh, there we go. So that it's not. Uh, so it's nice and flat. Basically, is what we're after. Another pin. Maybe put one there. Whoop. Safety pins have a mind of their own. Yeah, and then we've just got this last bit at the back here. This is the only thing when I was when we were setting this up, and I said it's quite a large pattern piece. I hope we can fit it on the cameras. We can. It's fine. Um, yeah, it's surprising how much this could be made from one meter of fabric. Uh, well, per layer. So um, the fabric I'm using to line it with, you would need a meter, and I'm using a meter of the Arabella on the outside it's just so pretty and as soon as I saw it and I thought you know what that would look so gorgeous in my sewing room so I'm being very selfish and making something that I get to use every day there we are right that will do that will do it's only for me don't need to be precious Right, so now I'm going to do my quilting. So I'm just going to pop that to one side uh, and I just need to switch over my sewing machine foot. I'm going to drop my feed dogs on this. So if you've never used a free motion sew, uh, foot before, this is what a free motion foot usually looks like. Um, and I'm going to just remove my sewing machine foot, drop that away, and my foot slides on and clips in place. With the screw. Free motion is so much fun because it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. Now I'm going to pull off the back of my machine. You may not be able to, oh, you can just see it where I'm pointing. See that little, little switch there. Now that has dropped my feed dogs. These are the teeth that are under here that feed the fabric through. So I've just dropped those away. So now my machine, oh, I'm bleeding somewhere. <clears throat> that is an occupational hazard if you sew. Okay, right, so now if I put down my sewing machine foot, I can still manoeuvre my foot around. So what I want to do is just follow the circles. I'm not going to do all of them because that's not going to make for some interesting TV, is it? Um, but this fab machine, I can actually cut the threads in between, so it does make it a bit easier. So I'm going to kind of do every other row. All I'm just following the 
circles on the print. Like I said, I don't have to be precise. This is great about free motion. You could do straight lines if you wanted to. I just quite liked making the most of the pattern that's in the fabric. And free motion as well means I don't have to try and spin the fabric around. I don't have to try and twist it all underneath the machine. So I'm going to miss a line, otherwise you'll be, we'll be here for an hour just watching me do this. And I know I'm interesting, but I'm not that interesting. about um, quilting onto fabric that is patterned you don't actually need to um, mark it particularly you can just follow the patterns in the fabric I say I'm following the circles but you can see as well that there is a grid pattern so we've got these gorgeous uh, sort of little crosses little floral looking crosses uh, in between each of the little mandala -y type circles that's what I call them is mandalas. I don't know whether that's officially the theory behind them. Miss another line. But yes, yeah, so if you wanted to, you could just follow the grids and do straight lines, or you could just stipple and do whatever you want, really. Um, I've done stippling before, and it's great fun. This is quite a large area to cover. Cover, um, and I'm not going to force you to sit through that. <laughs> it's different to what you're doing when you're taking your time doing it at home. So when you're doing it to try and be entertaining and educational. Okay. Apologies if I manoeuvre and you can't see the fabric. Let it come across. Oops. Back fabric has slipped. Right, I'm not going to go to the edges either because, um, although you can, absolutely, I'm just trying to limit how many I do. The reason why this is a good thing to do, if you've ever quilted, um, the reason why I want to do this for this is because it's going to hold my layers together. Um, so it's going to hold that wadding uh, in place with, um, with, with the top fabric that when I come to put everything together, it's not going to slip. You can see I'm not being precise or perfect. Each single circle is different. Um, but I'm just getting this really nice padded quilted effect and I just know it's going to protect my sewing machine beautifully colours in this fabric it's just so lovely to work with um, and because it's this sort of nice stiffer weight cotton I know with especially with the support of the wadding uh, it's going to really hold its shape when it's going around my uh, when it's around my sewing machine um, you know it's not going to collapse on, on itself because that's one thing I noticed when I was making the template obviously that's just out of sheeting weight cotton um, and it sort of just kind of hung over the machine. Uh, it didn't look tidy, it didn't look neat, it didn't look nice. So whereas this is just going to really hold its shape in a gorgeous way. So I'm thinking as well, because this is obviously going in my sewing machine room, my sewing room, sorry. Now I mentioned, you know, all the kind, some different kinds of machines that you might want to protect, like bread makers and mixers and things in the kitchen. Um, but I'm thinking because this is going to be in my sewing room what else could I do with it um, I'm thinking maybe thread catcher that can sit and you know the, the type you see they sit under your sewing machine and hang down the side uh, one of those pin cushions that fit to the machine so you've got that or the wrist, wrist ones um, what else can we do uh, in the sewing room We'll tie it all together. There's just so many things. And because there's so much fabric, 
I mean, this, this is 150 wide, like I said. Uh, so it's going to be, even though you're using a lot of it to do this project, there's still going to be a lot left over to make other things. taking as long as I thought it was going to take actually which is good um, and again because I'm free motioning motioning free motioning that's not a word is it free motion sewing that's better <laughs> uh, because I'm free motion sewing I am uh, able to I don't have to try and pivot the fabric or maneuver it around able to do it however works for me that was not a good circle never mind take your time when you're doing this at home <laughs> that's my advice <laughs> oh dear I am a professional I promise I love a thread cutter on a machine makes jobs like this so much easier. There we go. So we're coming up to the end of this side. Right, I'm going to break my rule of missing every layer. I'm just going to do this corner one, otherwise I've got a big old corner that hasn't got any, any quilting on it. Yeah, and I want to make sure that the quilting is serving a practical purpose as well as um, being decorative. Like I said, it's holding all those layers together. Now, the reason I've got backing fabric, so if you were using this for a quilt, this is not quilting weight cotton. I'm going to be honest with you. You can absolutely quilt with it. And I've seen people make quilts that are beautiful, but they're going to be very heavy because it is very heavyweight cotton. Um, but traditional quilting, so if, you were, if this was a quilt and this was your patchwork layer, uh, you would uh, actually probably have your backing fabric on the back. Now I haven't put my backing fabric on because I'm actually, my, fab, my backing fabric is essentially a lining, um, which is different to the, a quilt backing. So I'm not stitching my quilting through my, my uh, lining. So you, but you want some fabric between your wadding layer and your sewing machine. Otherwise, you're going to be pushing all that fluff and lint from the wadding layer into your machine. Uh, and that's not good for anybody. Um, because that's then going to take more cleaning and more looking after of your machine. Nearly there. I reckon we've got two more rows. So maybe like eight more to do. Eight more circles, not eight more rows. There we are. You can obviously go around and trim off any thread tails later on. I won't put you through watching me do that. <laughs> so I can get away with so much with my wit and charm. Not that. Right. Nearly there. Uh, so once I've done this, I'm going to be showing you how to make that opening to put your, hat, your uh, handle through. And that is um, a really, really useful technique for slash pockets for, uh, last row, uh, for slash pockets and for um, bound buttonholes, bound pockets. Uh, really, really, really good dressmaking technique. Um, if you are into dressmaking, but also for bags as well. And this is the perfect weight fabric for bags. I mean, those patterns that we mentioned at the beginning, honestly, could you imagine a bag made out of this? I think that might be my next project. Because when I'm prepping for these things, they send me loads of fabric. So I've got loads of it to make things with and it makes, I get really excited. And then I get, I have such a long list of things I want to make that it's a never ending list. Never, never ending. All right, last one. We did it. There we are. So.
So I'm going to whip out these pins quickly because now all our layers are, are held together beautifully with our quilting. I will definitely, definitely miss pins. We'll find one later on in the show. You'll, uh, you'll, you'll spot me, I'll be sewing and go, oh look, a pin I missed. There we are. Like I say, I'm, I am rushing through this because I want to make sure I get it done in the time. Um, so please take your time doing this at home. Nearly there. A couple more pins and then we'll do our slashed letterbox opening for our handle. <coughs> two more pins, one and two, done. Right, so I want to find my front side which is this side because it's got the blue pen on it. There we are. So again, like I said, I'm working with the front towards me. So all the time I know that my pieces are being laid over the top correctly. So there's our quilted piece. If I turn this over, you can see on our, can you see all the little circles? So that's our quilting through. If, <laughs> don't look at that side. You can see how wonky the circles are. Goodness me. Right. So now we're going to do our letterbox opening. So I've got my lining fabric so this is the dusty jeans that i'm using to line it with um, because it's just gorgeous look how beautifully these colors go together it's just stunning absolutely stunning okay you can see it if i bring in the, where the where's the blue i'm going to use the blue to bind it with so if i bring these three in look how gorgeous they work together I just love this. This sort of, like I said, I, I can, I just think of Wedgwood pottery when I see, uh, there's the dusty jeans. So this is what we're using uh, to line it with. Um, so yeah, that's this one. And can you see I've put my F there as well. So I can line these up. But yeah, just like a, like a Wedgwood blue, um, which reminds me of my grandparents and, you know, Wedgwood pottery that they would have around the house. It feels quite nostalgic actually. Right, the, the top, so my lining is cut to the same size as my outer. You can have a play around if you want to, when you've made it, when you're making it, if you want to cut the lining slightly smaller because obviously it's sitting on the inside of the wadding whereas the um, outer fabric is sitting on the outside. I've just done it for ease, I've done it the same size. So I've lined up my two pattern pieces. Now where's my template? I'm gonna bring my template back in Oh, and I'm going to line this up over the top. So what I did when I was making my template is um, I measured where the handle was, okay, and marked it on here and cut a hole. So now I can use this as my template for my hole. There we go. So. Now you can see, this is my template. So what I've done is I've measured the position of my handle, where it is. I've made it three centimetres wide, because that's big enough, much wider than my handle. It's in fact, it's about a centimetre either side of my handle. Uh, so that gives it plenty of room to manoeuvre around. So that means you don't have to be absolutely exact. And it's ma I've made it 19 centimetres long here. Um, again, my handle is about to here. So I've got a little bit of a buffer either end just to allow for movement. It means you don't have to be 100% precise. Now I'm going to just mark with my fabric pen where my letterbox opening is. Like I said, this is a really good technique if you're doing bound buttonholes, slash pockets, bound, bound pockets, uh, really, really good um, way of, of doing this. So where's my ruler? All of the gadgets coming in today. So I'm just gonna join up my little marks with my pen so that I've got straight lines. So I'm gonna stitch around this line that I've just drawn. But before I do that, I'm gonna do I know that my line is three centimetres, so one and a half centimetres is in the middle. So I'm going to just draw a line through the middle and then at the ends, I'm just going to draw a triangle. Like so. Okay. So now I've got my 
my little letterbox opening there. Now before I move it, I'm going to pin all my layers together so that they don't move. So I'm going, so you do need a pretty hardcore needle to do this, or I've just flinged a pin somewhere. We'll find that later. Right, so you do need a fairly heavy duty needle because this is a heavyweight fabric and I'm now teaming it up with two layers of heavyweight fabric, a layer of wadding and a layer of cotton. So you do not be wanting to use your Microtex needles on this. It, they will break. Um, so this is, uh, I'm going to be using a, I think I've put a 14, but a 14 or a 16 needle should be strong enough to go through this. So what I'm going to do now is just stitch around the line that I drew. Okay. Oh, actually, I need to remove my free motion foot first and lift the feed dogs, which I shall be instantly forgetting to do. The number of times I've gone to sew something after free motion sewing and wondering why it's not going anywhere. It's because I've forgotten to put my feed dogs up. I do that all the time in live shows as well. So look out for that one. It's fun. Uh, now, you can use a walking foot as well. If you have a walking foot uh, and that's going to help your machine. Uh, so I've switched my feed dogs back through. Yeah, if it's going to help your, your machine deal with the weight of your fabrics. Um, I'm just going to use my normal foot. Now I'm going to start, I don't like starting on corners. I like to pivot my corners. So I'm going to start halfway down. Oop. Move it so you can actually see it. Apologies if that flicks up. I'll try and keep it down. Uh, so I'm starting, oh, it's gone up again. The joys of live television, live internet streaming. Hopefully that will be better. So now I'm gonna, I've started halfway down my uh, long line so that I can then start in, in an easy place. So I'm just gonna, actually, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to increase my stitch length to three and a half because we're sewing through all those thicknesses of fabric. I'm just gonna give myself a slightly longer stitch length because that's gonna help the machine to um, stitch through all those layers. So I've got a heavy duty needle and a slightly longer stitch length. So when I get to my corner, lift up, and pivot around, and back along this shorter edge to the corner, spinny spin, try and keep it as flat as I can for you, all the way to the end, do it again, to our last corner, lift up, pivot again, and now I'm going to meet where I started. A bit of a backward stitch, cut my threads and bring it out of the machine. So I can remove my pins now. Put them over there. We'll deal with those later. Right, so there's our letterbox. I've stitched all the way through and it's through all of the layers. Okay, so that's all together. Now I'm going to get my scissors. Again, this is going to be a bit of a... You're asking your scissors to do quite a lot here. So I'm going to do a few layers and all I'm doing is snipping up to the point of this triangle. Okay, so I'm not going to the end, I'm going to the point of the triangle. I think that's all of the layers. Let's have a look. And now I'm to the point, I'm going to just follow those diagonal lines to the corners, like so. Spin it around and do the same thing. Once you're through, actually, it's not too hard to cut. I was thinking, I was asking more of my scissors, but my scissors are like, we can deal with that. We're good scissors. There we are. So I'll show you what I've done. So take care not to snip through your stitches. That's really important. So hopefully you can see that. We've cut along here and then we've created these two little 
triangles. If I lift it like that, you might be able to see it more clearly. There we go. Can you see? So there's our little letterbox. Now's the fun bit, okay? So I'm gonna take my fabric. I'm gonna post it through my letterbox. Post, post, post. Posted it through, spin it all around. I did tell you it was a big project. Look at all this fabric we're dealing with. <laughs> Why do things by halves? Here we go, look. So if your corners, you want to give your corners a bit of a press, but if they're not sitting as flat as you'd like them, then just go in and you haven't snipped quite far enough to the corner. But I think, actually, if I just give it a bit of a, a pull through and give that a good press. So there is our letterbox opening. How cool is that? I love doing this, these. They just, they make me feel very accomplished, very satisfied. <laughs> right, I am going to give this a, a little bit of a press, but let's bring in my, let's move all of the pins off of the ironing board. Bring my ironing board in. Okay. Give that a good press. And it's these corners that you want to give a really good press to. Do you know what? It would help if my iron was turned on, wouldn't it? I'll just wait a second for that to heat up. <laughs> We're live. Um, <laughs> well, I, might, I, I can have a look at some of the comments, actually, while, uh, um, while you're doing. Oh, my mother-in-law's on. Hello, Mary. Um, <laughs> Donna says, a cover for an overlocker and scan and cut or die cutting machine as well. Brilliant idea. Um, yeah, great. Oh, thanks for joining us today, everyone. How exciting. Uh, right, there we are. Give this a good press. Now my iron's actually turned on. It was on, it was plugged in. I just had turned it down for health and safety purposes and had forgotten to turn it back up again. Oh well. There we go. If I'm not asked back again, you'll know why. <laughs> Now, what you can do as well, let's give it a press from this side, because it's it is very thick. We're dealing with a lot of thick layers here. Um, you can see the little patches, we don't know if you can, but there's little patches of the pen there. Don't worry, as long as you've used a fabric pen, so that you can get them that remove with heat, you can get them that remove with, um, with water. So this is a water removable one. Um, so I just give it a spray with uh, the iron. Uh, then the... Um, pen will disappear. Now what you can do is actually what I would recommend is to just stitch a little line of edge stitching through and around these but what I'm going to do is actually finish the uh, cover first and then if we've got time I'll come back and do this bit because this bit can be done last um, but yeah just a little bit of an edge stitch just to kind of hold that really tightly. I can move my ironing board out of the way again. Right so now I'm going to trim away, I'm going to move my lining because I don't want to cut that. I'm going to trim all of this excess wadding and backing fabric away to the same size as my, uh, as my top piece. Uh, so if you were quilting, if this was a quilt, because the process is the same, um, it's a good idea to just leave a little bit extra around the edges because then when you bind it, so we're going to bind the end as we would if it were a quilt. Um, so when you're binding it, uh, that little extra five mil of or quarter of an inch of wadding then sits inside your binding and gives you a really nice plump edge to your binding. Just make, but for this, for the purposes of this, I'm trimming it all away because I don't want I don't want any excess. There we go. Oh, do you know what? The sound of shears going through fabric is one of the most satisfying sounds in the world. I think, anyway. There we go. Right, again, I'm folding away the lining because the last thing I want to do at this point is cut through my lining, that would not be a good thing. 
because that would then involve starting all over again. And I don't like doing that. Nearly there. Such a big project. It's lucky the fabric is such a delight to work with. There we go. Snip, snip, snip. Last bit. So it really pays to take the time to make that template at the beginning um, because. You can do all this safe in the knowledge that it's all going to work out. Last little bit. There we go. Snip away. Right, so now we've got our quilted top and our lining. There we go, with our little handle hole at the top. Now the next thing to do is sew up our side seams. Okay, so we're going to do this in two stages. We're going to start with the lining. So what I'm going to do on each corner is take the fabric at each side. So where we've got this kind of weird cross shape, we're going to join up the sides and that's going to give us our box. Now, bring in my pins. You can pin this if you want to, or you can just go rogue. It's completely up to you. Or even tack it first. I'm just going to pop a couple in, just because if something does go wrong, I haven't got uh, the ability, well, I have got the ability to unpick it. You don't want to sit there and watch me unpicking. It's the real thing. Um, which, incidentally, unpicking, one of my other least favorite things to do. There's a, there's a brilliant um, saying in sewing circles, if I've got my unpicker in my hand, now is not the time. And I think I want a plaque on my sewing room door. Yeah. Unpicking. I mean, you know, it's how we learn, isn't it? By making mistakes. My youngest daughter has decided she likes sewing and keeps nabbing off with my sewing machine and making herself stuff, which is absolutely fine. I love it. But she sort of went a bit wrong and I told her she had to unpick it. She made me do it because she didn't want to unpick it. <laughs> I'm not sure I need to kind of teach her this, the, you know, to embrace correcting your mistakes and not making mummy do it because mummy doesn't want to correct your mistakes. <laughs> mummy doesn't want to correct her own mistakes. Right, so I've just popped a pin on each end. Now, I've done mine with a centimetre seam allowance. Because you're making a template, you can make whatever seam allowance you want. <coughs> um, but I like a centimetre. A, it's a traditional dressmaking seam allowance, and my background is dressmaking. I'm doing reverse stitch at the start and end because I want nice, secure stitching. Uh, but I also know that the width of my sewing machine foot is a centimetre, so I can be sewing along and use the edge of my foot as a guide and now I'm getting a centimetre seam allowance. So I want to go all the way. This edge here, this part here, let me bring it into the front camera. You can see where the corners are uh, is going to be um, is like a diagonal, okay? So you can see that. So we've stitched up here. So you've kind of got to stitch to the end of your diagonal edge. Okay, so there's obviously four of these because we've got four corner, four corners. No, no, they're not corners, are they? Four. Is it vertices? Is that the official technical term? My daughter, my eldest daughter, is about to do a sats, and she knows all these amazing language and uh, language and mathematical terms that I don't know. So she'd go, "Yes, mummy, it's a vertices," or "No, mummy, you've got it completely wrong." She'll correct me later, I'm sure. I'm sure that's the name of a straight edge of a three-dimensional shape. Why they don't just say edges and corners? Baffles me. Everything has to have its own language. There we are. That's 
two of the three. Right, we're dealing with a lot of fabric now, so it's going to be a bit under, a bit trying to pull it around. Just take your time. It's going to be worth it, because also once you've got this pattern, you've got the pattern forever. So if you change the decor in your... So oh, it's mine. Yeah. Bobbin has run out. That's fine. I've got another one ready rolled because I am a professional. <laughs> I anticipated that happening halfway through. It was vertices. Oh, it is vertices. Yeah. Oh, I feel very intelligent. <laughs> oh, right, it was only that one edge that the... Uh, normally my machine beeps at me when it runs out of bobbin. I shall have a word with it later. Look out what's going on. I think my machine is too excited about its new outfit. It's forgotten. It's forgotten. It's supposed to be working as well as me. We're in this together, machine. Come on. There we go. Last one of the lining. Now, obviously, the lining is going to be easier to sew than the outside because the outside has wadding involved. Here's my pins. There we are. Two more somewhere. There they are. Right, so now if I show you what we've done, what we've, we've basically created our shape. We've stitched our four sides up. There's our shape. So now we're going to do exactly the same with the top. So get your two edges, join them together, pop a pin. So the, the important thing when you're doing this is that this is flat. If you know one end is slightly longer than the other at the end, don't worry too much about that. You can trim that away. But what you can't do is make this corner flat if it's not flat when you sew it. So there we go. Um, I might actually just go a bit rogue with this one and just sew them. Because why not? I like living on the edge. We'll... Uh, We'll just go with it. Right, again, I'm going to increase my stitch length again to four now, just because now I'm sewing through two layers of wadding, two layers of fabric, and two layers of um, the cotton, old cotton sheeting. I mean, literally, that is an old sheet that I had in my airing cupboard. You don't need to spend any money on your backing fabric. Um, well, not for this project anyway. So you can probably see I'm going a little bit more steady with my machine doing these seams. Just because I want it to... You can hear it going, conking slightly louder than it was before because it's going through all of those fabrics. But this is the difference between having a strong needle and a good machine. Uh, and the two in combination makes for some beautiful sewing. There we go. It's two of our four. <gasps> We've nearly, we're nearly there, people. This is so exciting. I don't know if anybody names their sewing machines. I was just thinking how I, my machine is excited for its new outfit, but I haven't actually named my machine. Suggest some names for my machine, please. Terence? My sewing machine is a girl. It could be. Terence could be a girl's name, you're right. Um, Terry? Terry is a girl's name, isn't it? There you go. I, I don't feel like she's a Terry. I'm sorry, Andrea, I don't feel like she's a Terry. <laughs> oh dear. Love it. Last one. By the way, people, if anyone has a question and I'm not seeing your question and I don't get it answered, don't worry. Um, I'll pop on later afterwards um, and answer them. Um, I'm trying to sort of see them and, and catch glimpses, but I'm very engrossed in what I'm doing. So it's highly likely that I will miss you. But I'll come back and uh, speak to you all afterwards. This is our last one. 
the last vertices. It's my word of the day. I'm going to see how many times I can drop that into sentences today. There we go. And a bit of a reverse stitch. A couple of threads. There we go. And that's our top done. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this around the right way. It's like a big bowl. <laughs> and I'm going to push my lining corners into the same corners. Uh, where are we? There we are. That's better. So there's a corner. In fact, what I'm going to do is push the corners out and just for now, I'm going to get my bigger pins and just pop a pin through all the layers. So I'm holding the corners together and then down to the bottom. Actually, let's, let's move the, uh, let's open that seam allowance so that we're not trying to make our sewing machine sew through six layers of wadding. I mean, it's good, but that's a lot to sew through. And the next corner. So at the same time, I'm pushing out the corners that I've sewn. So obviously these pins will come out at the end. So I'm just opening this seam allowance so that we're spreading the thickness. Otherwise, that's what we're sewing through, which is a, an awful lot. Line those up, pop a pin in, it's two, so we've got two corners left, oh, missed a bit on my lining, that's obviously where my bobbin ran out, see, got a little hole, that's obviously where my bobbin ran out, so I'm going to quickly, glad I spotted that now, could you imagine if I'd spotted that at the end? And my poor sewing machine had a sewing machine cover with a hole in it that was already sewn together and I wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Well, actually I could, I could just hand sew it up. Right, there we go. Right, so, oh, stabbed myself in the elbow. Line up those corners, push them out. There we go, grab a pin. Hold those together. Open my seam allowance. Bent pin. Why do I keep bent pins? Answers on a postcard. Right, that's the wrong corner. It's a bit of a beast, this, isn't it? There we are. And last corner, hopefully. <laughs> if I've got it right this time. Push that corner out, push the corners in together. Out, stab yourself in the finger. Don't do that. Don't actually stab yourself in the finger. It's not necessary for the project. I hold no responsibility for the well-being of your fingertips. Right, there we go. So, that is all our layers pinned together, corners connected and joined up. Uh, and now we're going to do our edging along the bottom. Now, there's going to be places where uh, the wadding, so for example here, can you see this layer? Is sticking out above the lining so I'm just going to trim that away but we can sort of trim it down a bit as we go round and sew um, but there will be a couple of places where um, things sort of stick out a bit higher than others like it's mainly going to be where your seams are just hit a pin and I'll put a notch in my scissors Goodness me, it's all going so well. Actually it is, it's going beautifully. 
yeah, it's mostly going to be where your seams are um, because that's where the different edges are going to be lining up. So just give them a trim. Right, so we're going to be um, edging this. We're going to be binding it in a traditional sense, uh, in a traditional way that you would bind a quilt. So what I've got here, now you need to measure all the way around the base of your, uh, your cover. Um, annoyingly, mine is 160 centimetres round and the fabric is 150 centimetres round. So I've had to create a join uh, there, so that's fine. Um, I've added a lot more than I need on, that's a lot more than 10 centimetres, but I've just done that so that I know I'm covered. So this is a two and a half inch wide strip, um, which is five, six and a half centimetres-ish, uh, and I've pressed it in half. Now, I'm going to just do a clever thing on the end, and I'm going to show you this little technique. Um, so we're not going to be doing any mitered corners, so that's a good thing. Um, makes it a lot easier. I'm going to open up my tape, and at the end, I'm just going to fold it over into, at 45 degrees to create this triangle edge here. And then I'm going to fold that back over and press it. Okay? So that is where we're going to start sewing. Now I need to suss out which is the front and which is the back. So there we go, I can still see inside, so I can still see where my pen mark is. So this part here is the front, and I want my join to be at the back. So I'm going to start in the middle at the back, around here. So let's find where the middle is. It's around there. I'm going to pop a quick pin in place. Uh, where's my end that I've just done? Right, so what I'm going to do is start here. I'm going to open up my tape and I'm going to start sewing around here. In fact, I'm going to uh, change my stitch to uh, a patchwork stitch. So I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So because this is a traditional uh, court, uh, traditional quilting technique, I'm, I've, trans I've changed to inches. I, my brain works that way, um, but a quarter of an inch is about half a, half a centimetre um, and it's a tradi traditional um, uh, patchworking seam allowance. Uh, so I'm going to use, I've set my needle to a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to start sewing and I'm going to get to here, I'm going to remove my needle and I'm going to fold this over and then I'm going to start sewing through all the layers here. Okay, and you'll see why presently. Let's move my pins and my scissors out of the way. So because I set my needle, I can start, I can use the side of my foot as a guide. So I've stitched past the fold. Hopefully you can see this fine. I'm going to bring my needle out, lift my foot up, pull it out. So I've not cut my threads. Don't need to worry about that. I'm going to fold this back over. So I'm not sewing here. I'm sewing about here put my foot underneath again, put my foot down, and now I can carry on sewing all the way around. So, ah, right, hang on, I'm going to make my, my stitch length longer again because I'm sewing through all that wadding. So I'm using about a stitch length four um, because there's so many layers of fabric to deal with here. But you, you know your machine, just have a play around what works for you. So we're making sure, I mean, because we've cut out our pattern pieces so accurately and we've done such a good job, they're all going to line up immaculately anyway. But on the off chance that they're not, just make sure as you're sewing through that all of your layers are level and you're catching them all with your needle. You could pin this if you wanted to. Um, there's no reason not to do that, but again, it does not make for interesting viewing, so I'm not going to do that. Stitch, 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 all the way around, through all of my layers. So now I've got my wadded layer, my lining layer, and to my doubled over tape. So again, this really needs a good, strong needle. Look at that blue with this. Isn't it gorgeous? So in love with these fabrics. 
definitely going to deck out my sewing machine room. My sewing room. Why do I keep calling it a sewing machine room? I mean, it is where I keep my sewing machines. But I sew in it. <laughs> in my craft room slash office slash kids dumping ground. All the way around. So again, we're going over these chunky seams. We've split the seam allowance, so it should, shouldn't be too bad going over them, but just take your time. There's my, look, see, <laughs> there's my join. I'll show you this in a second. You can't really see it from that angle. Let me, literally my join, where I've joined is about three centimeters short. <laughs> So I needed to, oh, hang on, got myself distracted with that, hang on, actually I'll bring it out and show you what I'm doing, let me un, just unpick a little bit, so you can see more clearly, right, see, there's my join, <laughs> there's my join and there's where I've got to stitch to, like literally that much, never mind, it's fine, so where my folded over bit is I'm going to trim my uh, my binding to probably uh, well just just a few mils just before where I've started sewing can you see this is where I started stitching through all of the layers and I'm stopping my tape just there so I've trimmed the rest of my tape away and now this end see it's clever isn't it gets tucked into there and then I'm just going to finish sewing and join up. And this is our neat end. I can't remember who taught me this technique, but it's one of my favorites. And I, I love you because it's so good for, for doing your binding and just to have that nice finish all the way up, join to the other end, bring it out. Okay. So you can see there I've stitched over and our end is tucked into that fold. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do, pull out my pins now because I don't need them anymore, uh, is to fold this over. Do it this way so you can see. So I'm going to come around, fold it over, and I'm going to stitch. Now this is very thick. Uh, so I'm going to actually top stitch this, which means that the stitching line will probably show a little bit on here, but because I'm using a very neutral thread, it's not going to show. But what I don't want to do is try and catch all of these layers in together because it's just going to be too much for my machine. Okay, so fold it over, lining it up like so. Uh, let's go back to our normal straight stitch um, and increase our stitch length again. You could hand stitch this by the way if you'd prefer. Um, again I'm not going to do that and make you sit there and watch while I hand stitch some binding, um, a metre and a half's worth of binding. Just take it steady. I'm literally sewing on the edge of the binding so that as I go, um, hopefully it won't show too much on the other side. If you really don't want your stitches to show, um, then you'll have to hand sew it. But the beauty of this fabric and how, uh, and the colors and the thickness of it, all the thickness of the different layers that we're using, it's gonna hardly show at all. So I'm just folding it over, covering up that raw edge. Even this blue against the dusty jeans, like the tinted blue and the dusty jeans together, even if you don't have the, um, the Arabella to, to tie it all together, they're just such gorgeous complementary colours. They remind me a little bit of being on holiday, I think, because you've got that sort of pale blue sea and the, the sand. In fact, also, with the, with the pattern on the Arabella, it's quite Moroccan, isn't it? It's like sand dunes and... Ah, oh, yeah, I love it. 
I think this fabric as well, you could, because you can quilt with this fabric. Like I say, it's not that you can't do it, it's just that it will make for very heavyweight quilts. Um, because of the sort of geometric nature of it, you could do some incredible blocks, quilting blocks. In fact, if you do do that, send me a picture because I want to see. <laughs> I want to see. I love seeing what other people create. I think that's what's so great about creative online communities is you just share, everybody shares their creativity. Um, it's just such a lovely, lovely place to be. Okay, we are nearly there, folks. I've probably gone over my hour a little bit. Um, but I apologise, but I really want to get this finished to show you. And we are almost there. Almost, almost. When we're on creating craft, I would at this point have somebody yelling at me in my ear to get a move on. But they can't do that to me here, so. Could. Oh, Andrew said he could. So I can't just sit and chat to these guys all day. <laughs> we could put the kettle on, we could have a lovely time. <laughs> there we go, we're at the other end. And I'm gonna lift out. So I'll show you what I mean. You can just see the line of stitching. Can you see that? But because of the thickness, I mean, it, uh, that shows you it's quite hard to see on the, on the screen. Because of the thickness of the um, fabric that we're using and the colours. Right, I am not going to do that top stitching because I think we're out of time. So I might do that when I get home. But I think, you know, just to do that will give it the final little edge. And now, right, let me work out which is the front. If I pop this over the top, the handle through. There's little Terence's new outfit. <laughs> bring it, I'll bring it across. There you go, look. So we've, it fits perfectly because we've measured it. And the handle fits through so I can carry, a, carry it around. Uh, and it's not collapsing either. We've got this gorgeous body of uh, wadding and fabric there. So there you go. We did it. Yay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's the Arabella fabric by the meter with the dusty dunes by the meter and the tinted blue by the meter. There we go. You can see them there. Um, and we mentioned very briefly, these are all um, so the Arabella and the tinted blue and the uh, dusty dunes are all $17.99 for a meter or $16.19 if you're a Robin's Nest member available on Highlights Craft website. So go and get those and they'll send you them. Uh, in meter length, like so however many meters you get it in a continuous length which is fabulous uh, and we did mention briefly the nature's veil which are behind me uh, and this was launched on Create and Craft you can just see them behind me we've got the gorgeous squirrels we've got the gorgeous um, blue tits and the bunny rabbits uh, they were all um, launched last week on Create and Craft so that means that you guys get them on the Highlight Crafts website this weekend so that's really exciting go and check them out because they are so cute and gorgeous um, but I think that's my time up that's my time done apologies for keeping you slightly longer than promised but hopefully you've enjoyed it um, I'll go back and have a look if there's any uh, fabric uh, any fabric if there's any questions uh, that haven't been answered I'll come back and have a chat to you later uh, I will um, be appearing on your screens I'll be back on creating craft on the 7th and 8th of May with Lemon Lane so I shall see you there bye bye